as you open up Rhino, it will look like this. First thing to do is to go to Grid Snap. You right click on set to get the settings menu up. Nice. Here we are. And then you're going to change the major lines, put that to 5, and then snap spacing to make sure it's set to 1 mil. We're going to change this later when we're wanting to be more exact to 0 0.5, but for now, let's just get used to this menu. All right? And you turn grid snap on and off, and basically it means that when you're drawing something, it snaps to each one mil. So each of these little squares is one mil, represents one mil. And the bigger squares are five by five. Over here is the layers. So to begin with, let's add some new layers. I'm just going to change them to different colors. click on the square to get a different color and let's do one more and layers are good to use um, in case you want to be able to distinguish different objects quickly um, click on the cube and then just draw a square. Now I swap to the side angle and then I click on this menu and get it shaded, right? So you have these four windows and the perspective is the one that shows you how the item looks from in a 3D fashion. If you, the way I'm moving the mouse now is by holding down the right mouse button. The way I'm, I'm selecting something now is using the left mouse button. So when I select something I can either select it from the left to the right and then the whole item needs to be within my selected square. If only part of the item is within the square then it doesn't get selected. However, if I do it from right to left, it's enough for it to just touch the item and it will be selected. The way I'm moving the mouse now is by holding down shift on your keyboard and holding down the right mouse button. So this allows this hand to come up and then you can pan the view. and th that's the same for th the rest of the three viewports but it's only in the perspective that I get this gyroscopic symbol where I can rotate and lower the camera and raise the camera alright so um, this is the standard menu you click there to get this and then you have all the other ones Um, that's the solid menu, surface menu, transform menu, curve tool menu, and so forth. So let's begin quite simply with using the solid menu. And we're going to click on the box. So as you saw before, I created the box by simply moving the mouse, and we're going to make a new box in a different layer this time, so I tick in front of layer 1 and then as I draw it, it will become red. So you saw when I made this box it got made from the top down and that's because my <coughs> mouse was snapping to the top of the previous box. I'll change the color again make a new box but this time um, I turn off the O snap I'll get into what the O snap mean in a moment 
now as you as I create the box I can see in the front view that it's being created from the top from the bottom and then up so I move it up and then one more purple box let's say same thing I create them like that now we're just gonna create four squares in each corner as well by copying the ones we already have so if I want to move this one up here I press alternate on the keyboard it's a bit stuck sometimes my keyboard is stuck trick is to press quickly on the keyboard when that plus comes up it means it duplicates it so that I got another one and then I can also use control C control V and now it's pasting it and then I can just move it over and I know that I have two of them and then if I want the green one over there uh, well actually let's just mirror these over so the mirror command is in the transform menu it's this one here I select my items then I say okay mirror from the center and I can choose the angle I'm mirroring at putting it straight up like that and now I've got uh, four cubes outside the the first four and now I just want to stack them to practice moving across the four viewports so if I want to put this one on top of that perhaps the best way to do it is to move it so I know it's on top of in, in the same place and then I can just move it up equally I can start with this one in the side view I just bring it in and then I know it needs to go in here and now it's underneath I bring it up oops it ends up in the wrong place I move it out so I just want you to play with getting these on top of each other equally you can bring it up first and then move it on top and you can also use the perspective view to move it by holding down control it allows you to bring it up and then you can bring it in now that oops see not quite right there we are okay so I'm gonna pick the white box and I'm gonna place it in the middle I want, oops so pick it duplicate it hit alternate now in order to get it in the middle of that surface I need to make sure that O snaps is on and that mid is active so I can grip it from the middle and bring that up there and then I need to also make sure it's lining up with the mid there put it in there still not the middle let's find the middle where's the middle there's the middle put it there and then bring it down. Now this, these can be a bit tricky to get the hang of at first. When this menu comes up it means that e the software is unsure of which thing you want to select. So it's just a menu, don't panic, you just click the one you want which is the black one in this case. And then I can move it down. Now I've got it where I want to be. Now this is going to be a bit tricky for you to make. To achieve but just go at it see if you can get it more or less in the middle with the mid snap on now change the viewport and I'm gonna use rotate to copy it across by activating copy equals yes alright so it goes one I click each time so when I have it in place I click and I move it across and I click and then I can hit enter to finish the command it looks like this alright now how do we get we need some cubes on this side too I think so let's select multiples so if you want to select more than one item you select by holding down shift that allows you to click on the thing and add it to your selection if you've selected too many you let go of shift, hold down control and then you can deselect the things that you no longer wish to use so we have these two selected we can rotate them from the top view 
So center of rotation, it's asking for copy set to yes. I'll put it in the center of everything. Now the first line is going to be in line with my item. I click and then I rotate them and click again and then hit enter to finish the command. Okay, now let's change layer on more than one item after we've created it. So currently I'm on the purple layer, that's the layer I'm creating with, so if I were to draw a new box here it would be in the purple layer. But let's say I want these two, I hold down shift to select them, I want these two on the green layer, so I just right click on the green layer and choose change object layer. Okay, and then we're gonna make these, let's say we make these red, change object layer, so now you're practicing how to change layer. And let's make all of the ones in the middle purple, so I'll just hold down shift, select them all, pan, rotate the viewport, shift, 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 shift. And then I'll make these purple, so I move them to that layer. Okay, next up is the Boolean command. So you'll find the Boolean in the Solid Tools menu, and you see there's four different ones. We're going to stick with Boolean Union and Boolean Difference for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the green cubes, I'm going to bring them in. So Holding down shift makes makes it easier to move it in a straight line. So I'll move it in. And then I'll move this one in as well. Now I'm going to look at the Boolean commands, which you find in the solid menus up here. <coughs> We're going to Boolean difference first. So if you select the purple, you can select all of the purple by right-clicking on the purple layer and then select object, that gives you all the purple ones and then you hit Boolean Difference and it will ask you which ones do you want to Boolean Difference with and I'm gonna say I wanna use the green ones the input is set to yes so that means the green ones will disappear after I run the command so now I've selected the ones I want to delete with and I hit enter and what was what was intersecting the purple with the green has now disappeared. I'm going to use Boolean Union now, so let's select let's try the selecting tool. So I from the top in the perspective I'm going to use this selective tool from right to left and I'm only selecting the purple ones like that and then I'm gonna hit Boolean Union and they are now one piece so I'm going to so now as opposed to this side which hasn't been Boolean Union yet so let's try that again if you try it from right to sorry if you try it from left to right it doesn't work so you have to do it from left to right as long as that dotted line is uh, above the purple it's going to work do boolean union now you have these two as separate ones and then by holding down shift i can move them in a straight line so i'll move that out like that let's try to use Boolean Union again here that one that one and that one now you see if I hit Boolean Union now it's only gonna unite whatever is intersecting so as you can see the reds and the purples are intersecting but it's not gonna join them together so I'll just unite that so there's two, two separate bits so I can move one up for instance the other one down right and if we do want to create a solid piece I'll have to move something 
uh, I'll have to let something touch. So this is going to work, for instance, to create one solid out of this. So if I now select everything, now you can do from left to right, as long as everything is in your square. So here everything is in my square, I hit Boolean Union, and it's turned it into one solid piece. We've been looking at solids, and now I will be showing you how to deal with curves. I'll just be quiet, and you can look on the screen what I'm doing. We will be using circles and the trim command to trim in between the curves that we create to use to then join the curves and create closed curves that can be extruded. So I've, I've managed to delete all these ones just by clicking on them and now I'm going to show you, show you how to delete multiple curves. So in here there's lots of curves, just want to get rid of all of them. I click in the space and then I get this box up that we talked about previously. And I can delete several curves. The box just needs to touch. Um, so what do we want to do here, I guess, is the right question to ask. So. Uh, Let's just see you create something like this. Nice little star in the middle. And then we can just make sure that there's these. We can just click away or delete with the box. Here we are. And is there anything left? There we are. We got that. Okay, so let's just hit enter, escape, that means we finished that command. And now you see these are separate curves that need to be joined together in order to be able to extrude them. So I select it all again, create that box. I can also create it from the right, if, sorry, from the left, from the right, doesn't matter. If it's from the left, the whole thing needs to be in. If it's from the right, you know, it's like, it's enough that it's touching. Um, join it. Okay, you see. Now it's composed of closed curves. You can see it up in the control prompt. It says it's 72 joined into 19 closed ones. I select everything and go to the solid menu and find extrude. extrude planner curve straight okay let's swap so we can see it that's how far our extrusion goes let's take it up to 2 mil you can either bring it up to 2 or you can make sure it says 2 up in the command and just hit enter let's see how that came out there we are so we got this little pendant here You can maybe even move it along, create something else with it if you want to do. Anyway, and that's that. So that's a short little video that lets you practice the trim command. Now, if for any reason you trimmed um something that you didn't want to trim so if i select everything and go trim and then by mistake i delete too much just go to undo here at the top and that will help you to get back 
what you didn't want to delete if you go crazy like this uh, you can just go undo and um, if your extrusion comes out oops hey ho undo <coughs> if your extrusion comes out too wide it might be because it's set to both sides just make sure both sides is set to no otherwise it will come out two mil at the top two mil at the bottom which will be rather wide um, now as you see I was able to extrude this before um, creating uh, it as 19 closed curves so now instead I have these cylinders that or these circles that I have extruded because they're all composed of closed curves the problem that we may have now is when we want to boolean these together <coughs> to merge them so if I go boolean union it worked but sometimes it doesn't so now it's all one and it won't look you won't see that overlap uh, on the actual 3d printed model um, so there you go you can do it even faster if you want to without having to trim but I suggest that you learn the trim command um, in case you want to use yeah you will end up using it for other things I'm sure um, okay good luck with that thanks